Hi all and welcome to Southern Cross Amateur Astro and our continuing video user guide for APT. Today we're going to go in and have a quick look at the gear tab. So let's get in there. Now the start of the gear tab section in the written guide is pretty straightforward. Um, it just details what's there, which is your telescope control, uh, your mead specific controls, guiding, focuser, filter wheel and rotator. The only thing you probably need to remember is that uh, if you shift click on the name of the tab it will become a floating window and if you shift click on it again or click the X on the floating window it'll go back to normal. So I'm going to move straight into each individual section from here. So right at the top of your gear tab you have your scope or more correctly your mount controls. Uh, to connect the scope the first time simply click, click on the connect button you'll get the ASCOM pop up, select your mount and click OK. APT will remember this of course and next time you click on the connect button or if you set up auto connect through your settings it will attempt to connect to the same mount as long as it's there. Um, next up you have your settings buttons. Um, I don't recommend using this but uh, some mounts allow you to change your settings while the mount is connected. Um, I don't like doing that while the mount's connected. I'd rather do it with the mount not connected and through straight through the driver itself. Uh, that's what I recommend doing, but it's up to you if you want to try it any other way. Next up, you have your current pointing coordinates here. Uh, my mount's parked at home, so as you can see, there's where the coordinates are. They're not moving, which is good. Next is a choice of your own. You can have J now. Um, this is basically coordinate system um, if you click this button and turn it on it uses what they call J now um, which is basically the coordinates of the stars based on the current date and time um, if you have it off like this it is uses J2000 coordinate system um, basically I leave it on J2000 myself simply because most star databases, etc., use J2000. Uh, plate solvings generally use J2000 because their databases are all based on that. Um, it's not a problem if you're doing plate solving within APT and you have J now selected because J, uh, APT will convert the coordinates. But if you want to plate solve outside APT, if you have J now. Uh, selected you may end up with errors in your plate solving when you do that um, the only important thing oh it's personal choice you ask 20 people you'll get 10 of them saying J now and 10 saying J2000 as I said I just use J2000 for compatibility with various databases and uh, catalogs um, but whatever you choose you need to make sure your mount and if you're using a planetarium also have the same setting I think uh, Stellarium calls it J of date rather than J now but just make sure whichever one you're using you have it consistent through all your programs next up is your actual mount movement controls uh, the little M button is your mount speed um, with the M it's uh, one arc minute per second you're holding down a button and the S is one arc second per second you're holding down the button. These two speeds can be changed in your settings. It's up to you what you want to do with that. I rarely actually use these, so I don't change it at all. I generally, if I'm going to move them with a button, I'll move them with my uh, driver and uh, at much faster speeds and more variety of speeds I can have set there. Of course, ringy thingy, which can change the figures you're using in your go to RA and deck up here, which are the actual coordinates you're going to uh, when you click on the go to button. Now, speaking of the go to button, hold down shift, click on it, brings up your advanced go to where you can enter the coordinates in alt as. Um, you can go to an offset of your current location, so rather than having to move center in the full move, you might just want to move a little bit on your your screen here from the last image you took you can enter an offset in there and do it that way and an RA deck offset if you want to enter those figures so these are basically identical just one uses alt as and the other one uses RA and deck and the last one here is to go to the um, celestial equator 
whether east or an hour west of the meridian and you can set your deck offset from the equator to be up or down very handy for uh, setting up your uh, dithering getting the calibration etc done for your dithering uh, very easy to use now some mounts won't handle alt as coordinates and when you try to do it you'll see an error message here that it couldn't do it an exception occurred uh, but that's not a problem because when that happens apt will automatically convert these into ra and deck and your mount will go without a problem as long as your location and uh, date and time and everything are correct i should say it will go there without a problem so that's what that one does if you hold shift click on it next we have point craft uh, I'm not going into this at the moment. This is all your plate solving. Um, I won't go into it simply because it has its own section coming up shortly. So I'll cover that at that particular time. Then you have your object browser, which simply opens your object browser. Uh, if you select a target from within the object browser and double click on it, it will fill the coordinates to go to. And then you just hit your go to button and off you go. Another option is to have... Uh, what am I doing? Shift click on it. And what that does, oops, I won't do it at the moment. Um, have I got my camera connected? Yeah. I'm surprised that my object browser didn't fill that up. Um, I have Stellarium connected at the moment. Uh, so I'll switch to there. Oh, I will eventually when it lets me. There we go. Um, and as you see, I'm centered on Canopus at the moment. Um, you can go in here, frame a target, decide what you exactly want then simply go back to APT and when you're ready instead of clicking on object hold down shift and click on it if you watch the coordinates up here they will change so it changes to the coordinates that you've got selected in your planetari planetarium uh, so that's a handy way like I said you frame up everything you want in your planetarium and then just shift click and it will fill the coordinates and you can go to them Park and unpark is pretty much self-explanatory. It parks and unparks your mount. Simple. Um, if you hold down shift and click on it, you get the option to set the current position as your park position. Quite handy if, say, you've got a small home observatory that you can't park in the home position because you can't close the roof if it's in that position. You can set a park position away from the normal one. That will work uh, for you so you don't have to actually physically move the mount each time um, I prefer setting it in both the driver and in APT at the same time that way they both work together I've done a post on the APT forums which describes how to do that with EQ ASCOM if you're interested in having a look at that it could be quite similar to other mounts as well I'm not sure sync after you've done a go to you can sync your mount to those coordinates by hitting the sync button but be sure to go to it first otherwise you're going to sync it miles from where it's actually pointing and of course tracking turns your mount tracking on and off at the time and that's it for the scope connections uh, next up we'll move on to uh, your mead connection so here we're on to the mead specific section uh, if you have a mead auto star connected you will have access to this area here where it just mimics the controls of your Mead Auto Star. And if you have a Mead Focuser connected through the Auto Star, you'll have another section that comes up underneath that allows you to use your uh, Focuser as well. But this just mimics your Auto Star, and that's really all there is to it. Um, as is a section I don't have and I don't use, I simply minimize it by clicking on the little symbol over here and that gets rid of it gives me more screen space i mean i've got plenty here on my desktop that i've logged in with but uh, on my laptop i don't have that sort of space so i close it down but that's it for the mead stuff there's not really much more i can go into there and next up we have the guiding and what should be called the guiding and dithering section of your gear tab um, basically you have your start and stop button to start and stop guiding um, but the settings here actually control both dithering and guiding and you will need to go into it even if you're not using uh, guiding because it controls the dithering by default APT has PhD2 guiding selected 
Um, so if you're not le- using guiding, you'll have to go in and change that anyway. But I'll cover all that more when we come to the appropriate section for your guiding. So just a quick one here for you. The graph here is of course for your guiding. Um, if you ever want to reset the graph, so there's nothing on it when until guiding starts again, simply open your settings and click and click on cancel and that will clear the graph the next time guiding is started. If you have a look at the settings button, you'll see I have this D here. Uh, that stands for dithering enabled. If it has nothing there, it means you have dithering disabled, but also auto cancels disabled. If you have a C there, there's no dithering, but auto cancels enabled. And if you have a D and plus C in there, it means that dithering and auto cancel are both enabled. But I just generally have it on dithering. I don't use auto cancel at the moment, but I'll get into that more later on. Uh, you see it's got a plus on it and shift clicking on it what that does is enables or disables or opens and closes the connection between APT and your guiding software so if you want to disconnect from your guiding or reconnect to it you hold down shift and click on it and simple as that and of course the top line here is just your guiding statistics the same as what you have in your guiding program um, so that's simple enough there and then your actual guide graph once I've got all this set up I generally close this one because it's exactly the same guiding graph you get in your uh, summary tab over here so I don't feel I need it in two places so if I'm not actually working with it I close that as I said before to save space on the screen especially when it comes to my um, laptop if I'm using that to connect because I don't have the real estate next section we'll get to it will be the focuser so now we have the focuser section um, at the top here you'll see two buttons so it's possible to have two focuses connected at the same time uh, maybe one on your guider as well as your your standard telescope um, so you can have them both set and they will have different settings stored for them so like connect to anything else, simply click on the connect button, uh, you'll get the pop-up and you choose the appropriate driver and click OK. So my focuser is now connected, uh, it's at position zero and it's all good. Now your settings, uh, you can click on that, open up your settings and you can do your settings that you might need to do in here and then click OK. Um, if you do change anything in the settings, I do recommend disconnecting the focuser, then reconnecting after you've done it. Position is, of course, the current focuser position. Um, not much you can say there. Uh, go to is, you can enter in here your go to position. Um, before I go any further, I'll go down these one, two, three. You can save focuser positions on these three buttons. Uh, simply, so if I want to save my O position, I will select shift and click on one. So position one is now my uh, zero position. Uh, if I move it to say, I want to go to 5,000, I won't go that far, 2,500, and click on go to, focuser will move to that position and then I can save that position if I want to. So, do, 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 get out there. Okay, so I'll save that as that position for now. So, and then all I need to do is click on that one so I can click on zero. I now have 2500. So I'll park it back to the zero position and off it goes. So you have three different positions you can change in there. And so you can fill your go to either by typing into it. Um, or, pardon me, um, using your position set here. Now with your go to button you'll notice there's a plus on it and that depends on what type of focus motor you're using. Most of the more modern ones are actual focuses with, um, uh, what do they call them? I'll have to go have a look again, my brain's gone numb. Uh, yeah, absolute focus, so that's it. I can always get my brain working eventually. So most of them nowadays are absolute ones. In other words, they can control and report the position of the focuser. Some, apparently, I've never seen one myself, um, have don't report the position or can't rec 
keep track of the position you're in and you need to emulate a position for those and if you sh shift click on your go to and you're using emulation uh, it will set the current position as the emulated position um, so I don't know exactly how that works I don't use it so sorry about that now your step size is how far your focuser will move when you use these buttons down here um, so a step size of five pushing on the single arrows will move it five in either direction um, so if I click that one it moves out to position five uh, if you click on the double buttons it goes five times that setting so this should go to position 30 and that's what it does um, by holding down shift and clicking on these or oh sorry by clicking on these three buttons you don't need to hold down shift you can set profiles uh, with different step sizes so you can either go through your profiles for step sizes or just set them in here it's up to you depends how often you change your step sizes I don't change them too often excuse me <coughs> but you can set them either way and of course your buttons here control where you're going to um, as I said the single button moves you a single step size the f double button moves you five times your step size so I might set that to 50 and it will actually move me another 250 out like so and I'll park it back to home so that's it for the uh, focus motor uh, time to move on to the next section and next up is your filter wheel uh, like everything else connects to an ASCOM driver simply connect wheel scroll down to where your ASCOM filter wheel is and click OK and that's your wheel connected I'm not going to go too much into this um, simply because uh, it gets covered more later uh, here you can calibrate your wheel etc etc decide if it's unidirectional you only want to move in one direction or whatever but uh, so you can do your settings there um, there is no filter names or anything here by default in your main settings which we'll be going into later you can set up all your various filter settings um, go to arrow simply moves you to the next forward as you say moving to or back if you have multi-directional um, same with go to filter I can just click on go to filter 6 and it will move to filter 6 once you have the settings filled in in your settings tab for what filters you have it will actually display the name of the filters instead of just a number and adjust focuser if once you set up your focus uh, filter wheel correctly it will uh, adjust the focuser for offsets but you need to have that all set up in your settings so we'll go through that when we get to that position but that's it for now for the uh, filter wheel there's not really much to it at the moment for this simple uh, starting one for the gear tab and finally in the um, gear tab we come to the rotator I don't have one so I'll have to use a simulator for this one and all you do is like everything else connect button pick it from the drop down list and hit OK so I've now connected the simulator one and what we do now is go across you have your settings button which is of course the various settings for your rotator you can change in there then you click your OK uh, like everything else once you've done that I recommend disconnecting then reconnecting uh, you have your position which is um, the current position of the rotator uh, your go to which is 0 to 360 degrees around of course and then you hit go to so I'll set, say 40 degrees click go to and you can see its rotator is going around and around I didn't realize 40 would take so long with the simulator but there we go now what you can do is if your rotators off a little bit so I can enter in uh, 20 instead now if you rotate us off that bit holding down shift and clicking on go to will set the current position as 20 so whatever's entered in here holding down shift and hitting go to will become the current position so it's just if you're off a little bit 
Then of course you have your movement buttons here. The single arrows move it by one degree in either direction, as you can see, 19, or 10 degrees in each one. And it's as simple as that. And that's it really for the rotator. Um, as you can see, you can go below zero, of course. And there we go. So that's the rotator, quite simple. And that's the gear tab done. Uh, thank yous for joining in. And uh, next time we'll move on to the tools tab. So clear skies, everyone. Take care, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.